Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 28th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Today, I took a little bit of closer look at an emerging standard. It's actually an IETF draft officially at this point, encrypted client hellos. The first data packet being sent by a client to a server in order to negotiate a TLS connection is the client hello. And it has been sort of the weak point of a TLS a privacy in many ways. First of all, the server name is usually passed along in the clear. Now, the was an earlier standard that just encrypted the server name indication field, which is the server name. That standard hasn't really taken off and actually sort of has been uh, deprecated in favor of encrypting the entire or most of the client hello, which also avoids some fingerprinting issues. Now, one question I was wondering is, is anybody actually using it? Uh, there are a couple browsers that at least have the option to implement it. And uh, what I noticed is the DNS record that goes uh, with this feature. Uh, there are uh, actually two sort of specific DNS records that were introduced for this feature. One in particular, HTTPS uh, is a DNS resource record type that is sort of used for encrypted client hellos. I noticed that clients actually sent the record, but uh, so far I don't see any servers actually responding and supporting it, which then of course means it falls back to the good old way to do client hellos. Now, these emerging standards, of course, will affect the efficacy of your network monitoring uh, solutions. And that's why you definitely uh, should keep an eye on uh, whether or not uh, these uh, standards are being used in the network and whether or not you may be missing some data if you no longer can, for example, uh, pull host names out of uh, these uh, client hellos. And of course, as usual, more details in the post. And Jenkins released an update fixing a number of different vulnerabilities, many of them cross-site scripting, uh, some C-Surf vulnerabilities, but also, for example, a few plugins that do store credentials like passwords in the clear. Most of the vulnerabilities that are being addressed here only affect specific plugins, but there is also one vulnerability that does allow an attacker to figure out if a username is valid or not. It's sort of one of those uh, timing tricks. There are also a few cross-site scripting vulnerabilities that do affect Jenkins itself. And as always for systems like Jenkins and complex uh, DevOps uh, tools like that, uh, don't just simply apply the patch. Also take the opportunity to review your overall configuration of the tool and your security posture around it to see if there's anything that you can improve. And Instagram is proposing to change the way it is verifying the age of users. Now, in Anything Instagram does, of course, has a potential impact on millions of users. And that's why there's a lot of scrutiny usually applied to what they're doing here. A couple of interesting things. First of all, this, at least for now, only applies to users in the US and only users who are changing their age, which in itself, of course, is probably suspicious and changing their age from under 18 to over 18. There's one obvious method and that's uploading an image of an ID, of course, in particular these images can often easily be faked. Not sure if they're having some kind of backend process that uh, verifies things like, for example, a driver's license number, whether it actually is linked to an individual with that particular birth date. Probably the most interesting idea they're pursuing here is where they're giving uh, people the option to upload a short video of their self. Has to be a video, not just a still image. And then that video is created by an artificial intelligence algorithm that supposedly is pretty good in telling if someone is younger or older than 18th, which is the age they're looking for here. Finally, there is an option to have three existing Instagram users who are 
all older than 18 vouch for you. Of course, uh, that also could easily be bypassed if you already have three friends who managed to convince Instagram of their age being older than 18. Nothing really perfect here, but of course, uh, they're experimenting with this. It'll be interesting how well it works and whether or not it works well enough in uh, for what they're trying to accomplish here by uh, somehow restricting or tailoring content uh, to adults versus uh, teenagers. And then we have updates from CodeSys. Now, CodeSys is a software suite that is actually used to create, develop uh, softwares for program logic controllers, so for industrial uh, control systems. And if you have problems in a development environment like this, then of course, software developed in this environment uh, may have issues. The Problems range from unprotected credentials to not having credentials at all to buffer overflows. A number of different vulnerabilities are being addressed here. Certainly something where you don't just want to look just at codes as itself and update it, but also at software developed using this tool. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.